Computer here. Today, I am going to teach you advanced features in Makefile such as variables, pattern rules, and automatic dependency tracking. If you have not watched my basic tutorial on Makefile, I recommend you to watch that video first before continuing. Without further to do, let's begin. In my basic tutorial on Makefile, we ended with this Makefile for a factorial program. However, there are two main problems that this Makefile has. First, it is difficult to change. For example, if I want to delete dash wall flags in my commands, I would have to manually delete each one of them. Although this isn't a big of a problem in this example, imagine a Makefile with hundreds of commands instead. To fix this problem, we are going to use variables. Second, there is a lot of redundancy in this makefile. For example, the two rules for main.o and factorial.o are almost identical. Ideally, we would want to combine those rules into one. To do this, we are going to use pattern rules. Let's look at variables in makefile first. To define a variable, you either use a colon equal sign or just an equal sign. To use a variable, you must first type a dollar sign and enclose the variable inside a pair of parentheses. If you use a colon equal sign to define a variable, the variable is evaluated only once at assignment time. For example, the value of cc flags 1 will not change even when c flags is changed in the future. This is the standard behavior of a variable in most programming languages. In contrast, if you use an equal sign to define a variable, the variable is evaluated each time it's being used. Therefore, the value of cc flags 2 can change if c flags also changes. Here is a makefile that uses variables. We defined two variables, cc and c flags, and used them in our commands. Now, if we want to change the flags, we can simply update the C flags variable. Let's now tackle the redundancy problem. Here is a makefile that uses automatic variables to replace the file names in commands. In our commands, $sign, at sign is replaced by the name of the target. $sign less than sign is replaced by the name of the first prerequisite. Dollar sign exponent sign is replaced by the names of all prerequisites. As we can see, using automatic variables greatly reduce the redundancy in our makefile. However, we still have two rules, main.o and factorial.o, that are very similar that we would like to combine into one. Using a pattern rule, we can combine the two similar rules into one. Essentially, a pattern rule allows us to generalize a rule to files with similar names. The %sign.o and %sign.c tells the makefile how to compile a file that is ending with .o, from the file that is ending with .c. Let's generalize this makefile even more by adding more variables. Here, we added two more variables, target and objects. With the current makefile, almost everything is generic. This is what we want because the more general a makefile is, it is easier to update. But can you spot one thing that isn't generic? Factorial.h sticks out like a sore thumb. Ideally, we want a generic rule without it, but we also want accurate dependency tracking. If we simply remove factorial.h, both main.c and factorial.c will not be recompiled when factorial.h is changed. So how can we go about dealing with this problem? We want these two rules to be generated automatically so our makefile knows the dependency of each file. We can use gcc to generate a file that contains the dependency information. Here we add two flags, dash mmd and dash mf. When compiling main.c, these flags will generate a new file called main.d, which contains the dependency information of main.c. Now, we want to put these flags and .d files into our makefile to complete the automatic dependency tracking feature. In this makefile, we define a new variable called dependencies, which gets its value from a function called pattern substitution. This function finds words in text that match pattern and replaces them with replacement. 
Therefore, the variable dependencies will become main.d and factorial.d. The include directive tells the current makefile to read one or more other makefiles before continuing. In this example, our makefile will read main.d and factorial.d before continuing. Finally, we define a variable called dependency flags that will allow us to generate .d files. This is the final version of our makefile that uses variables, pattern rules, and automatic dependency tracking. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See you next time. Computer signing out.